In this session, we are going to talk about an incredibly popular tool that Nerdio has to offer, the Nerdio Cost Estimator. We know that one of the biggest challenges MSPs face in building a cloud practice in Microsoft Azure is deeply understanding the cost of purchasing Azure from their distributor, or in some cases directly from Microsoft. MSPs are concerned that in moving to a consumption-based selling model, that they may accidentally quote their customers an incorrect or unrealistic price for Azure services. The Nerdio Cost Estimator aims to solve this challenge by providing MSPs with an easy to use tool that has considered all of the pricing challenges one may encounter when quoting Azure deals to their customers. We have organized our cost estimator by the most common use cases an MSP would deploy Azure. In this session today, we will walk you through the cost estimator looking at a more extensive use case, IT as a service, where the customer is running a complete virtual desktop environment in the cloud. Enjoy the session. Let's jump into the cost estimator. You remember it is under uh, the NAP, under the billing menu, NFA cost estimator is right here. And we're gonna be going through IT as a service. So IT as a service is for running a complete virtual desktop centric IT environment in the cloud. It's designed to migrate an organization's full IT stack to the Microsoft cloud, run desktop servers, applications, backup and security in Azure integrate with email, collaboration, and file storage in Office 365. So first thing you'll notice is as we select uh, the IT as a service use case, then our selections change and you can see there are additional sections and, and additional options. So let's go ahead and go through an example. So once we select IT as a service, then the next section is gonna ask us about the desktop information. Because this is a use case that is desktop centric, there's going to be a significant portion of the environment that is going to be focused on users' desktops. Uh, so let's start with an example. Let's say we're gonna have a 100 person uh, deployment or a 100 desktop deployment to be precise, not necessarily 100 users. There's nothing in here that's user uh, centric, it's really all about desktop user centric. Okay, so this is going to be our total number of desktops. Um, or, you know, let's go a little bit bigger. Let's go with 150 as an example. All right, then the next thing is out of those 150, how many of those users will need dedicated VDI desktops? And if you mouse over the tooltip on the right, it says executives and managers often use dedicated desktops. These desktops receive dedicated compute resources and users are fully isolated from each other. So, you know, if we have a 150 person organization and we may have, you know, 20 of these people using VDI dedicated machines, that means the remaining users, which is basically 150 minus 20, are RDS users. And when we talk about RDS users, we mean that these users are going to be sharing session hosts, set of session hosts, RDS collections, etc. They're not gonna get their own dedicated resources. Then the question over here refers to graphically intensive users with uh, or graphically intensive desktop needs. So this would be for GPU instances. Uh, if we type in a number here, it's going to take that number of users. So let's say we're gonna place five users there what you'll notice is now we have 150 total, 20 VDI, five GPU RDS, and 125 standard RDS. The next selection is the type of plan that's going to be used for Nerdio. So there are two plans. There's enterprise and professional. Uh, the reason I selected such a big environment is because it's really not a fit for a small deployment, and that's what professional is all about. So this says for organizations with more than uh, 15 users, you know, could be up to 25 in some cases, enterprise edition requires a minimum of seven cores in your Azure subscription, typically used for larger organizations uh, that want multi-factor authentication, DR, firewall management, RDS collections, and hybrid AD. So we'll go with enterprise, and then we'll do one more example later with pr uh, professional as well. Okay, so that's, that's what we need for the desktop side of things. Then we go into the server side of things, and there's really two questions here. One is how much total 
storage is going to be needed for files and databases. So this will basically be the size of the data disk attached to the file server. And there are some pre-configured selections here. So anywhere from 128 to eight terabytes. So let's say we're going to go with a two terabyte uh, disk. And then the next question is going to be, will there be any application or databases that require dedicated servers? So what this means is that in addition to the basic environment, in addition to the domain controller and file server, RD gateway, RD session host, VDI, desktops, et cetera, in addition to all of those, will there be any applications or, or SQL servers or any of those additional VMs? And if we select yes, you'll notice a familiar layout where you can go in and add various servers. So let's go ahead and and just add a couple servers here. So we're gonna do SQL01 is gonna be a D4v3. It's going to have a P10 OS disk and a P20 data disk. And then we're also gonna have an application server that will be D2v3. Uh, with an E10 for OS and no data disk at all, okay? So now we got two servers in addition to whatever the, the system is going to quote out for, for everything else. Okay, the next section is about licensing. So the two questions here are about Office 365 E3. So you, you should all be aware with the fact uh, of the fact that in order to license Office installed on the desktop, you need version of Pro Plus and Office Pro Plus is included as a subscription either in the in a standalone SKU of Office Pro Plus or in an E3 or E5 uh, SKU. It's not included with E1 and it's not included with Microsoft Business or Office Business Premium, right? Those don't include Pro Plus and Pro Plus is the only one that's supported with the RDS role enabled because it needs shared computer activation. So if you wanna include, if you're the partner and you're doing this analysis for 150 users, you may wanna include 150 licenses of E3 in this particular estimate. So let's go ahead and select 150 users. And then the next question is about RDS licenses. So because we're gonna be deploying RDS, whether or not users are gonna be getting dedicated VDI desktops or using shared session hosts, every user needs an RDS subscriber license. It's a per user license. And there are you know, three ways to provide that license. Number one, if the customer already owns an RDS license, could be they pur purchased it for, for an existing RDS environment that's on-prem or in a dedicated data center. In that case, if they have software assurance, then they are able to bring their own license, which is when you would say no in this case. Uh, in the, the other scenario is if the partner is a SPLA partner, meaning that they can rent Microsoft licenses out, not through the CSP program necessarily, but being a SPLA partner, then selecting yes here will add the cost of that license under SPLA into the analysis. There is a third way to now license RDS, which is through CSP software subscriptions. Uh, that is something that's going to be added into the cost estimator in the very near future. But for now, this only accommodates either software assurance, meaning the customer brings their RDS license, or a SPLA license, which is provided by the partner. So let's go ahead and say yes to that. Okay, then we're down into the other features section. Uh, you'll see a lot of these things are gonna be familiar, but some of them will not. So we'll go through each one. So we have this hybrid usage. So let's see what type of effect that has going from no to yes. We're gonna go from 41, 42 down to 25, 10. So a significant you know, $1,600 or so savings, but we're gonna need 424 cores of Windows Server and 424 cores uh, divided by eight. So we need 53 eight core packs and each eight core pack for three years is about $14 a month. So we're looking at 742 per month, which may, means that it does make sense to go with hybrid usage, prepay for it upfront because you save about $1,500 
and then you have to pay extra about 750 so you're you know you're saving uh, 750 dollars or so by going from no to yes and bringing your own uh, server OS license. The next question is regarding reserved instances. Let's see what impact that has. So if we go from a three-year reserved and 2510 to pay as you go, so we are increasing that by about $1,420 or so. So that's also significant savings. The next thing is uh, in-region backup. I'll, I'll remind you the assumptions behind in-region backup is that every VM is backed up. Every VM has 50% utilization of its disk and the data churn rate is 2% per day and there is a 30 day retention. So, you know, from 29 to down to 25, so about 440 or $450 is going to be the cost to back up that environment, this entire environment, with 30-day uh, retention and daily backups. Out of region DR, you can say yes to that. You'll see that's going to increase the price by slightly over $1,000. That's in addition to the backup into another Azure region with Azure Site Recovery. Let's leave it off for now. Site-to-site -site VPN. For a large environment, that's typically needed. So we're going to select site-to-site -site VPN. That adds a small additional amount for a VPN gateway, a basic VPN gateway, which is about $26, $27 list price per month. Then the question is on hybrid AD. So hybrid AD, again, you'll recall, is the ability to extend an existing Active Directory into Azure by spinning up another domain controller and giving NAP visibility of that Active Directory and being able to assign desktops and manage those user objects. That's a common feature for large deployments like this. So let's say yes to that. And as you'll see uh, me selecting yes, VPN now became a required field. And you'll also notice I now have a server I cannot remove from this section, which is that external AD DCO1. Let's make it a, two, a B2MS, two core eight gigabyte of RAM VM with an E10 OS disk. Okay, keep going down. Okay, we have this option for desktop auto scale, and you'll notice that it's grayed out. Now, why is desktop auto scale grayed out? You recall that we, when we discussed auto scaling, there are two types of scaling. There is up and down, which means that the VM gets sized, resized uh, during business hours, sized up, and then off hours, sized down. And then there is also a way to run RDS collections, which is a scale out and scale back in. Now with sizing a VM up and down, it doesn't make sense to do that when you are prepaying for reservations. If you're prepaying for a three year or one year reservation, then there is no sense in actually turning that VM off or making it smaller because you're already going to be prepaying for that capacity and there is no cost benefit by turning it on and off. However, if you are paying as you go, as opposed to reservation, you'll see that this option will get highlighted. And then as you make the changes, you can see what impact it has on cost. So since we're gonna be doing three years, let's leave this as no, because that's our only option. And then finally, the last selection in this section is the on-ramp regions. You'll recall the on-ramp regions is a way of spinning up a small Azure deployment with an RD gateway, which then gives you the ability to place um, additional desktops or server VMs in that region, or simply route the user through that region to the primary desktop deployment. So if we say yes here, we're gonna get a selection down there asking us how many on-ramp regions there will be. We can say, you know, yes, and there are gonna be two of them. And what this accounts for is additional bandwidth. And it also accounts for the additional site-to-site -site VPN uh, tunnels and VPN gateways that are going to be necessary to accommodate on-ramp regions. So I'm going to say no to this for now. All right. Uh, one thing that I missed is this RDS collections option. Oops. Why am I? Okay. There we go. So we have this RDS collections that's checked by default. And in most scenarios, it, it will actually be used by, uh, by an environment that has 150 desktops in it. So let's keep that as on. If we turn it off, you'll see some of the UI will change, but let's turn it on and I'll explain how that works. So it says, 
Um, we notice that you would like to take advantage of RDS collections to handle desktop workload. We will maintain a minimum of one, which is configurable, and no more than 25, which is calculated. And it tells you it's calculated based on the host size and the number of users and users to CPU, CPU core ratio. And I'll show you what that means. And then you can configure what kind of host you want to use. So let's say if we are, you know, by default, it's a single core host, which is unrealistic. Generally, that's not going to be the case. Uh, let's say we're going to go with an eight core host. So you can see if I'm going with an eight core, then our maximum number of servers has gone down from 25 to four. And what happened with our price? Let's say we're currently at 2819 and here we're at 3030. So it's a little bit more cost efficient, not dramatically so. Um, but if we go with four core VMs, it looks like that actually makes a pretty significant difference. So what's the difference? No, only a few dollars. So as, as you would expect, because the cost of Azure Compute is pretty directly proportional to the number of cores, and we're making these calculations based on how many users, how many users per core, and how many cores each VM has. So as you switch from one VM to another, and all you're modifying is really the number of cores, this number changes accordingly, and then the cost doesn't fluctuate much, right? It fluctuates a little bit, but not significantly. Okay, and, and um, I'll, I'll continue talking about this because there are a few more details about RDS collections, but let me jump to this set of sections. This is asking a question of for how many hours out of a week will this collection be maxed out? Meaning if we can have a minimum of one and a maximum of seven, and we can even say, hey, you know, we're never going to have a minimum of one. We're going to have anywhere between three and seven um, hosts in the collection. We're going to have, you know, nine, let, let's say eight to six, which is 10 hours, five days a week, which is 50 hours in a week, is going to be uh, maxed out, meaning it's going to be at seven because that's the, you know, that's the business hours that, that we've decided we're going to put in here. And then the remaining number of hours, so there's total 168 in a week, so 118 hours are going to be in the minimum size. So for purposes of the calculation, this is going to say, all right, the cost that we're going to calculate is going to be three, co three hosts of this size running full time for 50 hours. And then, I'm sorry, uh, seven hosts of this size running full time for 50 hours and three hosts of this size uh, running for 118 hours. Okay, that's how the calculation works. And you'll see on the next screen, the assumption that is being made is that the minimum number of hosts that we program in here will get reserved instances purchased for them. And then the remaining hosts will be used without reservations, meaning they will turn on and turn off as needed. So in this case, we'll have three reservations and four hosts in addition to those three. So we'll have a total of, of seven hosts, but only three of them will have a reservation associated with them. Okay, then we go into the cost assumptions. We have bandwidth. Uh, so in the previous example we looked at, which was line of business servers, we could not do bandwidth in terms of desktop users because there were no users involved in that, in that type of a use case. Here, since we are primarily focusing on desktop users, uh, the type of bandwidth you need for a typical RDP connection is between a dollar and three dollars, uh, you know, and, and it's closer to the dollar, so we'll, we'll put it at, at 150, could be modified if needed. The storage operations, as we discussed last time, it's a per gigabyte additional charge for the operations, only applies for standard storage. Premium, there isn't, uh, there isn't any charge on those. So you just put in this average number and it, it will recalculate everything for you. Now, this number is really important. This is what is really driving the calculation of how many hosts you will need. So let, let's use this as an example. So this is configured and says that there will be an average of five users that can be handled by a single core on a standard RDS session host. So that means that if we have 150 users, we'll need a total of 30 cores. And since we'll need a total of, of a roughly 30 cores, 
and we, each of one of our VMs is four cores. Um, actually, you know, I take that back. We don't need a total of 30 cores because we are 125 users because 20 are going to be dedicated VDI and five are going to have GPU so that they're going to be in a different session host. So, you know, 125 over five is 25. So we need 25 cores and 25 cores divided by four and rounded up comes out to seven, right? So 20, uh, 25 you know, by four is obviously not, not an integer uh, divisible number. So we rounded up to, the, to seven. So that means we're going to allocate up to 28 cores for this collection that is going to support 125 RDS users. Now, where is this number coming from? So this number is coming from some published research and, and our experience on what a typical density of a user per core happens to be. You know, what we've seen is it ranges between, let's say three and six. So if we want to throw a little more horsepower into this, we would say, let's say four. And if you say four, right, what you've seen now is that for the same size of a session host, we now have more of these session hosts that are going to be estimated in this analysis. So if we go three, it's obviously going to increase that even more. So let, let's just go with four as an example, okay? So we'll go with four, um, four session hosts. I'm sorry, four users per, um, per, per CPU core. Okay, this next selection applies to RDS session hosts with GPUs. So recall we selected five users are gonna have GPUs. So in this field, if we say that two and a half users can be uh, put in a single core, that means we need a minimum of two cores. And because the smallest GPU enabled RDS session host is six, this makes no difference. So if I change this from two and a half to one, you'll notice that my price doesn't change at all. If I change it to six, my price won't change. But as soon as I change it to seven or more, let's see how much, no, I'm sorry, I need, Actually, no, it needs to be, sorry, it needs to be less, less than one in order for me to need to have more than six cores. So let's just say, you know, one is an example. That means every user will get a minimum of a single core on a session host. The next selection is the size of a VDI desktop. So we've selected up here 20 users with VDI desktops. And here we get the opportunity to actually select what kind of desktops will they have. So if this is a standard user, then maybe a single core VM is enough, but generally uh, I like dual core VMs at a minimum. So I would go with a B2MS, which is two cores and eight gigs of RAM. Uh, let's leave that selected. And you see the price has gone up a bit because we are now going from a D1V2 to a B2MS, okay? Then we have the familiar fields of the discounts. If someone is going through distribution, they'll usually see eight or 9%. Uh, the reserved instances discount, maybe something like 2%. Their Office 365 discount, maybe something like 15%. Then you select uh, the, uh, the region where it's gonna be. So let's say it's gonna be in East US too. That made actually quite significant difference. What's it 2749 versus uh, that's 26, but our, um, the GPU is not available in that region. Whether we have South Central, South Central. Yep, there we go. South Central is 3078 and looks like East US happens to be, wow, it's really a $300 difference, which is obviously significant. And then the currency. All right, so, so this is a sample configuration. Again, 150 users, 20 VDI, five GPU, two terabytes of shared storage, a SQL server, an application server with these parameters, including Office 365 pricing and RDS licenses, using your own, bringing your own Windows Server license, using three reservations with a backup, without DR, site-to-site -site VPN and hybrid AD, using RDS collections without desktop auto scale because their reservations make that unnecessary, no on-ramp regions, 
between three and eight session hosts of four cores at 16 gigs of RAM each and 50 hours of the time, the collection of the 50 hours of the week, the collection is maxed out 118 hours. It's at the minimum size, $100.50 per user in bandwidth, three pennies, three cents per user for standard storage for operations budgeting, uh, an average of four users per core on an RDS session host, one user per core on a, on a GPU enabled session host, two cores, eight gigs of RAM, for individual VDI desktops, 9% Azure discount, 2% reservation discount, 15% Office 365 discount running in the East US and priced in US dollar currency. Okay, so all of that, if we click on view costs, we get this nice little breakdown. So now it tells us that, you know, at the top level, we're looking at $53 per user per month, which is, the total of 70, uh, 7894, including licensing for Nerdio, including RDS, including Office 365 and Azure. Uh, the thing it doesn't include is the price for this. This is coming in a future version of, um, of the cost estimator, but for now they will have to go you know, off quote here and figure out what the cost of these cores will be. Uh, as we looked at, uh, what was it? Uh, 296 over eight times about 14 or $15 will be the cost per month for, uh, for those licenses. Recap of the assumptions we made, you know, two terabytes, 150 E3, three-year reservation, no DR, et cetera. And then here is the actual architecture of the environment. So we'll have uh, a domain controller and a file server, ADFS proxy, hybrid AD controller, SQL Server, EPSO1 server, the ones we configured, an RD gateway, RD connection broker, a single RDSH host that's going to have a GPU. It's a six core host, so it's plenty to accommodate our five users who each need one core. 20 uh, VDI desktops of two cores and eight gigs each, and then RDS session host between three and eight. And you note here, it will tell you how many reservations you actually need. So all of these are reserved with the exception of in this RDS hosts analysis, you have three hosts that are reserved and five that are not reserved because they go in and out and there's no reason to prepay for them. Going down here, it breaks this thing down into subcomponents. So you can see about a thousand dollars is the desktops, which is really the cost of VDI plus the GPU users. RDS collections is additional $444. You can see 50 hours per week maxed out at eight, 118 hours per week, it's going to be at the minimum size of three. You can see the discounts, the site-to-site -site VPN costs, the region, server compute costs, bandwidth and IPs, et cetera. And then the total average cost per month is 2749, but because we're using reservations, $44,301 will be paid up front in the reservations, and then $1,562 will be the cost per month for the rest of the time. Okay, so now um, this, so, so let's just roll it all up into this one number, which is $53 per user. And we used pretty aggressive settings in terms of savings. So let's say this is what we call the best case scenario for a partner. When they go to sell the solution to a customer, this is what it's gonna cost them, their cost, right? Best case scenario. Now let's look at some of the assumptions that we've made and let's put them more towards list prices. Like if a customer were to go online into Azure and buy this thing directly, um, how much would that cost? So what we need to do is change this to a no, change this to a no and then remove all of these discounts. So basically set, uh, set this to zero, set this to zero. This got grayed out because we're not using reservations anymore. And what you'll see is list price for the environment or you know, what we like to call worst case scenario for the partner is gonna be $79 per user. You can see Azure is obviously a much more significant component in that case. So if when they go and try to figure out their proposal to the customer and price it out, they should be using this number um, you know, as, as, their, as their starting point. 
And then once, once this environment, uh, you know, once the customer is using the environment, they can go in and optimize it by buying this, buying this, and applying their Azure discount to an Office 365 discount to the thing, right? So it's it's pretty significant difference. It's a $26 per user per month difference times 150 users between the best case and the worst case scenario. And you know, hopefully you can see with the, the Nerdio uh, for Azure cost estimator, this type of what if analysis becomes really easy. So you can go back and you can see what the impact of making little changes is like is it the big lever or small lever and uh you know something like this to create it from scratch using the azure calculator or some other tool would be you know a lot more complicated and a lot more work